All right, welcome back to the parts bin. Today we're talking high performance street pistons for your 5912 valve. So for high performance pistons, there's a couple of options. In the past, we have used this a lot. This is a Molly Power Pack piston. They build this based on an industrial design from Cummins. So they take it, they cut, they fly cut it here, they add the Teflon coat on the skirts, and they work real well. I've had this thing lots of power, well over a thousand. I think we had it fail around 15 or 1600. So you make a ton of power with these. They do have their limits. This is another piston that we have never used, but I want to. We're going to try it really soon. This is based on the genuine Cummins 370 Marine application, the highest power offering Cummins ever offered this engine in. This is the piston design they used. I'm going to tell you why we're excited about it. So first off, as you're looking at it, there's, there's a big difference between these two of these, and it's the very top little steel ringland here. On this piston, it has one steel ringland. In all cast pistons, this piece is steel, so it doesn't get beat up to death while you drive down the road. This is the reason cast pistons last hundreds of thousands of miles, and forged pistons last about 20,000 miles, because of this piece of steel right here. So you'll notice in the marine one, there's two ringlands cast in this big steel piece here. This actually runs two keystone rings in the steel ringland. So that's huge. I was like, that's amazing. Another thing I really love about this thing is right here, this piece of aluminum right here. Every time I've overpowered one of these pistons, the thing that breaks is this second ringland right here. This piece of aluminum is really thin. That little section of aluminum right there, it'll, it'll break right off. I mean, I just bust right off. And here's why. When you make a lot of power, you have to have enough piston to wall clearance that this is not going to scuff your cylinder walls. So it's pretty big. On a keystone ring, the bigger your gap is, the more area there is for gases to travel around that keystone ring and get pressure on your second ring. And so when you make a lot of power and you have a big piston wall clearance, a lot of pressure goes around this ring and gets caught on the second ring. And there's a lot of pressure here. There's not a lot of metal here holding that, and so it breaks off. So that's a big problem with this piston. I think that's this piston's weak point, personally, because that's, that's where it's failed. I've done it two or three different times. I've broken that piece right off. So I know that's the weak point of this piston. So when we found this, I was real excited, because you can see this is huge. You're not going to break off this second piece. And so I'm really hoping you make a lot of power with this. Um, some of their differences. First off, they're both tapered. So since this swells with heat or expands, these pieces, you probably can't see it, but they actually come in like this. From the top ring land to the top of the piston, it's like a cone, so that can expand outwards. They both have that. One advantage this piston has is you'll notice the distance from the top ring to the top of the piston is uh, more than this one. It's further away from the heat. Some people would argue this makes the ring stronger because it's further away from the heat, and I think it's a valid argument. So is it enough to overcome the benefit of this? I'm not sure. We're going to find out. These pistons come from Mali, Mala, Male, however you want to say it, M-A-H-L-E is the name. I've heard so many people tell me the correct way to say it, and they're all different. So we're going to say Mali. So these Mali pistons come fly cut from, the, from, from them, and we fly cut these. These come at 150 thousandths. That's what you get. You can get them non-cut or cut at 150 thousandths. So that's nice because it gives you room for a lot of cams, but it's a lot more than you need for some cams out there, so that kind of hurts you in your compression ratio. It's not big enough for some other cams out there, so it limits your choice how big a camshaft you can go. With this, we can cut any depth we need. If we know the cam, we can match the butterfly cutout for that cam, so that's kind of nice. Um, other things that I think are worth of note, you know, it's a difference. There's a different skirt design. There's a difference here. This is solid where this one it's kind of got some weight cut away. Maybe this one's, this one's a little bit lighter than this one. That's a real advantage. But what's cool about this one is this has a longer pin. Because this metal comes all the way out here, is not cut back, the pin is longer. And we like as long a pin as we can get. This has more surface area in the pin where it contacts the piston. So it has a greater load capacity because of that longer pin. And um, anyway, this is a really exciting hot rod piston that, like I say, we haven't used, but we're going to. If you're building a hot rod cast aluminum piston in your 5.9, give us a call if we want to try something new. We probably won't have good data for a couple months before we build an engine 
beat the crap out of it and tear it apart and see how it does. But uh, in the meanwhile, I'm very excited about this. If you have any questions about this piston, this piston which is tried and true, or any other questions, call us here at the shop. Hopefully this is interesting for you. We'll see you next time on Parts Bin.